Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of my Motorsport Spotlight series. Today I'm absolutely spoiled for choice when it comes to guests as I don't have one or two guests but three. That's because this week I'm joined by United Auto Sports 2021 WEC team. The team consists of Phil Hansen, Felipe Albuquerque and Fabio Schwerer. We talked about their love for racing, the team's Le Mans win last year, the upcoming season and much more. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi, and uh, thanks for being here, Phil, Fabio, Felipe. How are we all today? Yeah, fantastic. Good to, Good to hear it. Right, I think we'll start with you, Felipe. So, basic question, we'll go right back to the start. What made you want to go racing in the first place? My, my dad, first of all, gave me, uh, showed me what it was a, a go-kart. And then as well on the, on the Sundays back in Portugal, uh, and in my time when I was coming over in the go-karts, it was the big fights on the television, on the national televisions of Ayrton Senna going around and me Portuguese and him Brazilian. It was like an, a little bit of like a closer connection for cheering for Ayrton and his character. And then he was winning so much. Obviously, he was a, he was a big hero and it motivated a lot of young drivers and I'm one of them. Um, and obviously then the passion for for racing and driving and uh, the adrenaline, uh, it, it just triggered me up and uh, it, it was just uh, just love until today. It's great. I mean, I should say one of the most iconic F1 drivers, multiple drivers ever, really. So good as inspiration as any, I guess. Sure. Um, Philip, yeah. Uh, so yeah. current company aside, who's been your favorite driver to share a car with? Probably, I mean, I'm biased to Felipe just because I spent so much time with him. Um, over the course of the last sort of two and a half years. Um, prior to that, I haven't really shared the car consistently with any other driver, um, really. So, I mean, it's not that I have, you know, massive favor, favors to any driver that I've shared the car with. Obviously, I've shared the car with quite a few big names, you know, Lando Norris and Fernando Alonso at Daytona. And Daytona was a, was a tough weekend for us. So, it was a, it was very sort of professional for that weekend because we were trying to make a a car work that we we didn't really have in the perfect window that weekend um so yeah it's it's a bit more focused and difficult to really compare that with some of the weekends with felipe for example where things have gone perfectly and we just sat back relaxing um for the majority of it I'm giving um, a lot of yeah. credit there it'll go right because felipe was the other one or <laughs> no just just because we had the better package on the weekend and, and things just went around more smoothly um you know it's difficult it was our first day's owner for example um with fernando and Lando, um, so it was never going to be. If, if you would have been with me, if you would have been with me that weekend, you would have won. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. If we'd have been the Cadillac, we definitely would have won. <laughs> In my car. In my car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fabio, then, what about you? What got you into racing in the first place? Uh, first of all, I live quite close to a karting track. And uh, my dad was a couple of times with champion and karting, so... I saw the trophies and some videos from him, and we were quite often there. Uh, but he never really wanted that I start karting, uh, because yeah, motorsport is quite expensive. But I was the whole time like, I want to start, I want to drive. And I think after two years, he said then yes, and then everything started. So Felipe, yes. Yeah. Do you wish that you, you spent some time doing single seat doing single seater racing? Do you wish that you could have continued in that further on, or were you kind of happy to move on? I I I, I wish I could have done a few more years in uh, in endurance in in, in the in the formulas. Um, I, I enjoyed it a lot, but you need to be sustainable. I mean, uh, I mean, there is only sustainability in a few teams in F one. <laughs> uh, there is a lot of people in F1 that is not sustainable and they're just paying. And, uh, and then the other one, yeah, I just, I needed to make, I wanted really to be a race car driver and, and make my living out of it. And uh, there was none going around that was sustainable. I mean, I still did A1GP where I was, I was hired by A1GT team Portugal, uh, which I had a lot of fun. Uh, 
but then obviously I had to drift away from that because, uh, yeah, I was not making my living out of it. So it was not the place to be and uh, I had to, to leave. So I, one thing that I learned is with time is like one thing is like what you like to do. Another thing is your career and uh, your, 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 your dream, which is it needs to be bigger than your passion, right? So you can be passionate about doing formulas and, and things that you really like, which would be like driving formulas, but your dream is to be a race car driver. And, uh, and I'm really, really happy in the endurance world that where you can, you know, live, I'm living out of it uh, for the last years and uh, being happy and successful in there. So, yeah. So yes and no <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> I mean, it, it probably helps that you've got on to in the WEC then and been as successfully as you have been as well. So that, that can't hurt on the WEC oh, yeah, column. You, 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 me, you know. <laughs> there's, I'm, there's going to be a running theme here, I get the feeling. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Phil, uh, what is it about endurance racing then that you love so much? Um, I mean, just everything. The fact that there's so much more going on than at a typical single seater event. Not that I can compare it because I never, never raced at any single seaters, but, um, you just have more going on. I think it's a, it's a fuller form of motorsport. You have more emphasis on, on teamwork and it being a team environment. Um, I think quite often that's forgotten in, in formula one, you know, you, you hear about the drivers being the stars, but there's, you know, literally thousands of people. Um, working behind the scenes to to make it all come together um so yeah i think the fact that there's just this team environment you've got the the elements of traffic and the fact that there's this sort of emphasis on endurance and and looking after the car isn't really a, a big factor these days so it's kind of like um an endurance sprint race nowadays um and the cars are fantastic at least they were last year um and yeah the, the traffic is something that's really exciting you know that's where I think F1 gets gets its criticism. They've tried a lot to make it sort of artificially better in racing with DRS and you know push to pass systems and, and battery lives. And you don't really have to have that in endurance racing because there's always these traffic scenarios that um, that really invoke great racing. Um, and definitely being part of that on track is is probably the most exciting part of it. For sure, for sure. I mean, it must be uh, you, you're not. I don't think you ever get a, a proper clear bit of track in in WCD because there's just so it's ridiculous how many cars are on the track at one time it's just even if you're not directly racing them you're just this just everywhere yeah and it's really exciting you know judging closing speeds and and even being able to pass your competitors through traffic is is pretty great um so then Fabio um you switched from Formula 3 into WEC um how much do you like it do you prefer it to the single seater or are you not a bit undecided yet or what are you do you do you love it as much now it's difficult to say um i really like the uh, lmp2 card it's nice to drive and it's a lot of new things for me happening this year and i never raced in endurance so um there is a lot of unknown for me, but I'm really excited for the week uh, for the race next week. So um, it's difficult to answer that properly. But um, when I watch a bit parts from Le Mans or from other ra endurance racing, it looks amazing. And at night with over 300k overtaking the GTs and all the cars, that looks mega. What have you been doing to prepare for the upcoming season? So, in terms of training or that kind of thing, is it is there anything you've had to be doing differently to prepare yourself? Uh, yes, I changed a lot of training with a lot of endurance, uh, so cardio training, a lot of running, cycling, a bit more in this way because before uh, one hour races, it was a lot of um, short but then really active training. And so now I switched quite a bit and I tried to be a bit lighter than last year because there was a minimum weight of the driver. So you, it was easy to be a bit heavier and it wasn't the issue. And I think in endurance racing, it's quite important to be light again. So I trained a lot of these things to be in a good shape for endurance and as well to train on the simulator longer stints to stay in the rhythm. 
A question for all three of you then. Um, which track are you most looking forward to racing at this year? Uh, we'll start with you, Phil. Me? Um, I like all the tracks this year, to be honest. Um, Your favourite? Spa is one of my favourite tracks in general. Um, I think I always look forward to Spa um, just because it's been so kind to me over the last few years. We've had four victories in the last four appearances there, so it's been a crazy it's not run. Record. No, it's not. And I don't want to jinx anything, but yeah, it's one of my favourite circuits for that reason, especially. Um, Le Mans, obviously, is really special as well because it's Le Mans. I'm mm -hmm. really excited to go back um, after last year. Um, and apart from that, I think there's, there's no other circuit I haven't visited, so I'm, I'm not that excited. It was a shame last year they cancelled a couple of races because of the COVID restrictions. Um, I was looking forward to Lagos quite a lot because of its history. Mm. Um, but yeah, this season, I think just a lot of the tracks I'm very familiar with, so looking forward to Spa. What about you, Felipe? I was looking forward for Portimão. Unfortunately, WEC and uh, IMSA uh, continue not to talk to each other and organize themselves on calendar. So there will be a clash. Uh, I will not be able to do Portimao, my home race. Um, uh, it's a bummer. But uh, other than that, I think I'm always, I think, going for the big one, Foloma. Again, mm. it's going to be super competitive. And, uh, but my, so, I no, should have no, thought about Le Mans when I was asking the question, really. I should have figured you all go for that one. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, but as well, I'm looking forward for the first race of this season, like Spa. And, and obviously, this year, WEC, it's with a really nice calendar with Monza as well on it. So hmm. it's kind of cool, the calendar that they have there. Unfortunately, there is two clashes with IMSA, which um, uh, it's, I don't know how, I don't know how can they make it in six races to clash so many with another championship that they are coming to a, uh, a same rule going on and they keep clashing and it's just uh, they should play on the Euro millions you know uh, in 52 weekends to clash five races in the two races of five in the same weekend anyway so yeah so pretty much would be a good one but if not like uh, Fabio you, which one are you looking forward to most? Overall I really like the calendar it's quite old school tracks and that's always nice um, but for sure I think Le Mans is the highlight of my career probably till it so I'm really looking forward to Le Mans there I have seen a lot of nice things there and everyone tells beautiful things so I haven't been there but I'm really looking forward and then just going back to you Felipe then for a second um you, I was saying earlier, you've done a bit of single seater racing and you've done WC racing as well. Do you have which one do you prefer in terms of style of racing? Um, it's hard to say. It's because they are so different. I mean, uh, the the whole weekend it's completely different. So basically, your mindset when you're going for a single seater racing, you 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 go alone and uh, you you wake up and you go to your car and. You're always alone unless you have your entourage, you know, of helping you with, you know, with your helmet and uh, your media guy and stuff like that. With endurance, it's just different. We start <clears throat> uh, before that. We start talking like, are you ready? Are you feeling? And we organize ourselves to go together. And then we meet in the airport and we go talking about, you know, story. What have you been doing? And we try to motivate each other and uh, thinking of what we've been doing and, and then trying to put our both energies, bus three, to, um, you know, to, to make us better for that weekend. Uh, so there is kind of a bound there. And, uh, and over the time, like a little bit like what I have with Phil, like we keep, we become friends if, you know, if we, if the relation is there, we become friends and it's life is better instead of just, you know, formulas, you go out and if things goes well, you win, you raise the trophy, you are a winner, then you come home and you, you know, you are the winner alone. That's it. There is just, uh, I don't know. I it's just a different, for you. different teammate aspect as well, because in say single seat to your, 
you you win as a team, but at the same time you're competing against your teammate. Whereas in in this scenario, you all need to. You always win. win. Yeah, you always win as a team. But when you are alone in the car and you're just depending on you, you know, it's more a word saying out that oh we win as a team. It's I'm pretty sure that those guys in F1 when they win, they really feel that they won alone. Not anyone else did it for them it's that bonds in 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 uh in uh in endurance you know that you win as a team mm-hmm. that is winning really as a team because you did one third of the race more or less and you did like you did like 34 pit stops you needed them uh instead of one so it's just different i think which there is nothing wrong with both of them. It's just no. different approach, but I think there is a lot of fun in endurance racing. And then switching back to you again, Phil, um, what's the most important thing that you've learned from racing so far to help you improve in how you approach a race or a race weekend? Um, I don't think I've ever really struggled with like where I've had to be in terms of mindset heading into a weekend so I don't know if there's actually something I've I've learned in the last few years that has changed and how I approach the weekends Uh, I mean there's only so much you can really do in LMP2 to really prepare Um, there's not a huge amount of similar work that you can do so uh, yeah I think it's it hasn't really changed much so it's difficult for me to answer that one fair enough Um, so then a question again for for all of you You've all got a fair bit of racing under your belt, especially between you. What is your favorite racing memory to date? I suspect I might know a couple of them because of last year, but mm-hmm. I'll see if there's anything else apart from that. I'll start with you, Fabio. There are a lot of um, nice things happening. I think the first win for me in single seater. Uh, was a mega feeling, especially under these conditions. Uh, I started with slicks. I think five drivers out of 35 guys started with slicks and the rest with wets. Uh, After five laps, I was lost. But (laughs) at the end of the race, I won. And when I crossed the line, I not even noticed that I won because it was so messy. Uh, That was for sure a mega moment. But as well, in as as example as well last year in DTM when I finished the first time P5 uh, after the really difficult starting of the season uh, that felt mega as well that felt almost like a win because it's one of the most competitive fields in the world or at least it was um, yeah that's that's some really nice memories and every podium and victory feels always great but there is not I would say at the moment there isn't any moment that's better than the other moment. Maybe it'll come this year. You never know. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. What about you, Felipe? Well, I have a few already. Um, it's hard to say which I one was the best. I don't know whether I'll let you say about last year's win or not because that seems like an obvious, an obvious choice. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know whether to make you finish last year's or not. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, Lama was uh, one one feeling that I was really looking for in my career to win Lama, uh, even if it's the class LMP2 was by far the most competitive class in there, and then you need to get the credits for the most competitive class instead of, you know, being the overall, which is obviously the most special one. But uh, yeah, I have like the three Daytonas as well, which you know, in Daytona as well. It was even closer than than Le Mans, even if Le Mans for us was one of the closest from every all the time. Like we finished with the 20 seconds apart from the two, and we were fighting for four seconds in the last 10 minutes. Uh, so in in Daytona, we I won I don't know one or two times like with you know one second in something or four seconds ahead. Um, so the race of champions, the Renault two leaders. I think all of, all of those wins in a crucial time, it represents so much to you. And even when back in go-karts, uh, those moments are so important, like surprising. That's why we keep going on chasing the next win because it's so special and it's so cool that um, 
I think the best moment is always the next one. I think I agree definitely. If they come along at just the right time, then they definitely mean more to you then. And then when you're looking back over the career, it's you know exactly which points were the, like the triggers for the next yeah. thing to come along. Phil? True. I, I don't have three Daytonas, so for me, it's the obvious one it's um, Le Mans. Um, yeah, I think this Le Mans obviously a dream come true for me, um, being such a young guy in endurance racing. Le Mans was always talked about as the, the most important weekend of your of your season. Um, and to just come across the line at Le Mans and, and know it was done and at that point think no one could take it away from you uh, until, you know, there's obviously the risk of scrutineering, but obviously everything was fine. Um, yeah, that, that will be forever my probably most important victory. So it's the race it's that even if you're not a fan of motorsport, you've heard of Le Mans. So it kind yeah, of, it, it is an extra special thing there. Um, yeah. So then back to, back to you a minute, Felipe. Um, do you think then that um, you've, been, you've been racing for quite a while now, do you think that you're in your prime in terms of performance as a driver or do you think that the best is yet to come for you in, in that? You're not quite at your peak yet. I think I'm on my peak. Um, obviously, uh, with the years, I will gather more experience. Um, we are always learning and experience is always something important. Although, you know, I'm yet to see what age does to us in terms of fighting as our speed. Uh, but obviously, uh, you know, as we can become older, normally we tend to be slower. Uh, I need to experience that by myself and knowing when is, you know, when is my engine biological engine starting to, you know, losing some reps. Um, I, I need to learn that, but then you need to, com- I need to compensate then on the fitness. Uh, I, I remember to be racing again, you know, in teammates with Tom Christensen, Dino Capello, Alan McNeish, and they were super quick. The speed was not the issue. I don't know what was their issue. Well, actually they didn't have an issue because they kept winning it. So, um, uh, I, 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 will, I will see. I, I go as it goes. I go as along. But uh, for sure, I'm on a peak in even uh, of performance. And what it says that is the results. Because, uh, I mean, lately things are being quite well. <laughs> uh, winning Le Mans and Daytona in a row, it's pretty cool. Um, but I need to keep working because these young kids are coming up and they – put me in line, obviously, with uh, they're super quick and they want a lot to, to win. And um, yeah, I should never take anything for granted. I think that's the lesson that I'm taking with, uh, with experience. I'm sounding very wise there. Hmm. Uh, question for the three of you then. Um, which track have you never raced at but you'd like to? Start with you, Fabio. I think a lot of the, those tracks are in the calendar this year. Um, <laughs> Lemo, Fuji, Suzuka, I think Fathers <laughs> as well. So, yeah, I think the older the track is, as better it is. Fuji is pretty recent. <laughs> I would say I, I would have liked to re- be racing at Macau back in the time when... when you know, when I was in formulas, he just missed the opportunity. It was just um, pretty sad. Um, but Bathurst would be one. Um, I would like to race there. I would like to race as well in Suzuka. And then there's not much, like maybe Nürburgring. But Bathurst and Nürburgring, it's like, uh, is some niche. It's like GT world, and I'm a bit away from that. So... And I want to be focused on prototypes uh, as I'm doing as the last five years. Um, so it makes no sense for m- so much for someone to hire me or for me to go there. For sure, I would be. I would not be that. I would not be that bad, even if I'm just doing driving LMPs, because I see some other teammates doing it. Uh, that I'm racing in in the endurance in the prototypes, and then they go to GT, then they are fine. But. Uh, in the level that I want to do, 
yeah, it, it, it would not be, you know, it'd be hard to, to go there and win it. And you, Phil? Uh, yeah, like I briefly spoke about, I think Interlagos was um, was one that I was on the calendar and then obviously for obvious reasons, we weren't able to race there. Um, apart from that, I think similar bucket list to um, to Fabio in terms of like the big races, Bathurst and, and Nürburgring, the Norse life, I think is probably on there somewhere. It's on um, most people's list, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, I've been pretty fortunate to race a lot of tracks. Um, not many times at a lot of the tracks. Spa is obviously my most frequently visited track because it's, you know, motorsports favorite. I think probably motorsports oldest circuit actually. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. I think Interlagos at the moment would be the one that I felt like I missed out on. Hopefully next year. You never know. Yeah, you never know. So uh, I have forgot one. I think like uh, Philippe said, Macau would be mega to race in. I think. When the old Formula 3 was there, I think that's probably one of the best races you can race in the world. You always hear a lot of good stuff from all the drivers that go racing there. So it's uh, Felipe and Phil, question for you then. Obviously, last year was an awesome year for the team. Um, was there any point in the season that you thought or you felt like that you were definitely going to win this? Or were you just not counting your chickens until you got there? Um, I mean, I guess I'll go first. Um, I think we were always on the back foot, so there was never the point where we thought we could just, we'd won the season until we'd won the championship. Like, um, starting off with the DNF and then having two issues with following two races, and we got away with podiums, but it really felt like we were on the back foot. Um, obviously, we realised that Le Mans, because of its double points scoring system, meant that it was going to be the deciding factor. Um, but at that point, we weren't so confident because we felt like we'd lost a lot of points early on from that DNF. Um, and, you know, to, to, it's pretty remarkable that we've managed to win the championship with a round to go. And we had a DNF at the first round um, and with a few issues along the way. So, um, so yeah, definitely luck turned in our favor throughout the, the rest of the year. But, um, but yeah, there was definitely not that point where we thought, oh, we've definitely tied out now until we'd actually finished and won the championship at the end of Le Mans. No, but you, Philippe. So I agree with well, Phil there, or? Yeah, I agree 100% with Phil. But uh, uh, again, we, we, we were talking and, and we went to Le Mans already on lead of the championship. But, but we, you know, we, we spent so much time together that we talked about everything, you know. And uh, one of them was exactly that. Like, do you think we're going to get it or not? And uh, we, we are still in time. But even talking to the other, to the opponents saying that, you know, when we were not on the lead, like if something happens to you in Le Mans and the opponent in the, in the WAC championship wins it, it's 50 points straight away there. And it completely decides the championship, which I think is wrong, to be honest. I think it, just winning is Le Mans by itself. It should be already worth enough, you know, uh, that thing for yourself or the driver for the team. You don't need to seal the championship with a Le Mans win because automatically, and I think historically, it must be rare the teams that didn't win Le Mans or something happens to them and still win the championship. So basically, we won Le Mans, we've got the title. But, you know, and especially when our competitors had the problems, uh, it decided even more. So we were always with our feet on the ground and waiting for Le Mans to see what was happening. And I'm just going to slide into a slightly non-motorsport section of questions here, just to make it a bit more fun for people listening and watching. Then I'm going to stick with you, Felipe, for a second there. Um, what's something that isn't real, but you wish it was? Narnia? I don't know what you're going to say. <laughs> Unicorns? Uh, 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 I wish that um, real that it wasn't was. Jesus Christ, that's <laughs> Uh, uh, I don't know. I needed to think. I, I, I wish that Imsa and Wek would talk <laughs> together, but in real life, they don't. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to come back on that one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Phil, uh, for you, what fact are you really surprised more people don't know about you? 
What facts? Mm. Just an all round legend. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Well, I mean, there's not there's not much really like no nothing scary or like crazy about me. Um, just a modest legend. Yeah, just yeah, no, exactly. I'm just a pretty normal guy, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Felipe. I mean, probably Felipe would be the best guy to answer that because he might have heard a fact or know something about me that he was like, "Oh, really?" But I don't think there's anything like that stands out, to be honest. So you're answering his question. Yeah. He's going to answer your question. <laughs> Should be doing this in reverse. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Putting drivers talking about themselves or talking about other guys is just kind of weird. But, uh, but. Yeah, uh, Phil trains like a bull, I would say, and trains like hell. Um, it's dedicated, um, yeah, and professional, I would say. So, uh, if something could be standing out, I think in, yeah, I would say that Phil, with the, with his life that he has, with his support, the support that he has, he could be a spoiled and stupid kid and arrogant and he's not and super humble and super dedicated and that's super rare you should get him to write a uh, a reference for you if you need it yeah, i get him to write my autobiography for me <laughs> <laughs> uh, fabio completely different question from you again there um would you rather be able to fly or be able to breathe underwater i think to fly to fly is better Flying for you. What were you saying, Felipe? Superman. Superman or Aquaman? <laughs> Superman. <laughs> <That's actually laughs> question, <laughs> Watch out for kryptonite, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I anyway, anyway quite like Superman, so this question is quite yeah. easy to answer. There's no hesitation and, uh, for you at all, though. You're just straight flying. Yeah, exactly. And there is one thing as well to... You know, flying is quick as well, so I like things that's quick, so that's nice. I should have guessed <laughs> that. With the, fits with the racing. All right, perfect. Then uh, I just want to thank you, all three of you, for being here today, and I want to wish you the best of luck for the upcoming season, which you've got the prelude starts next week, and then the season starts early May, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, exactly. Well, there we go. Sweet Thanks for being here. And, uh, Thanks a lot, bud. Take Cheers. care, man. I don't know about you listening and watching, but I had a lot of fun listening to these three guys chatting about motorsport. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for them that I have another successful year this year. Thanks again to all three of them for coming onto the show, and thanks as well to United Autosports. Join me again soon when I'll be chatting to another famous face from the world of motorsport. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and check out the other videos on my channel. Away from YouTube, you can find me over on Drive Tribe, and feel free to follow me on Instagram at t.albers.daily.drivetribe. You can also find me over on GP Grandstand TV, where I'm part of their weekly podcast. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you again soon.